and welcome to City Desk, a behind the scenes look at Santa Barbara's top local news stories. I'm your host, Jerry Roberts, joined by an all star lineup of local journalists. Tragic, sickening, shock, outrage, deja vu, a wake up call. Those are all words being used in news reports to describe the disastrous oil spill at Refugio Beach this week. Given the magnitude of the story, this special edition of City Desk will focus exclusively on the spill what caused it, how the cleanup is going, and how the community is reacting. Joining me are four reporters who began covering the story within minutes of when the first emergency calls went out. Laura Cooper, reporter and photographer for NewsHawk. Kelsey Brueger, staff reporter for The Independent. Melinda Burns, longtime environmental reporter and Nick Welsh, executive editor of the Santa Barbara Independent. Thank you all for being here. Uh, Laura, Laura, you were the first reporter on the scene um, on Tuesday. Uh, tell us what happened. Um, well, I think I was one of the first. No, I, the first. I pulled into the campground at um, Refugio, and um, it was pretty deserted. I should just back up and say, um, before you even got to the campground, traveling north on Highway 101, I noticed a couple um, of miles south of El Cap, just this smell. It was just overpowering. It, I noticed it right away. So uh, we didn't quite know where the spill was happening. We just kind of knew it was sort of in that area. Did you think your car was uh, uh, I did. I, down? I The smell was so powerful, I thought, oh my gosh, it's my engine. I my engine might be overheating my car might be about to blow up but it was not um i kept going and exited at the beach and uh sort of got out and walked around and i've never seen anything like it it was just the entire beach was coated that whole bay around the campground was just covered in tarry viscous um crude oil and so. were there emergency vehicles there yet? i saw one fire truck nobody around it um, and the beach was kind of deserted. There were a few sort of dazed campers walking around. A, a lady came up to me and said, oh my gosh, is that oil? Was there a spill? And we were all kind of just sort of making sense of it together. You know, they had their phones out and I was shooting pictures as well, but yeah. um, everybody was just kind of in a daze. We have some of those pictures I think we're gonna be showing as we <coughs> talk here. Kelsey, you've been uh, assigned to cover the um, people uh, who are in charge of putting out the information. Mm -hmm. um, how's, how's that been going? So I have nothing to report. <laughs> <laughs> Is that pretty no. much what you've been getting? <laughs> so they've had uh, actually two press conferences uh, each day. Well, two today. They had two yesterday. Um, today, and being today being two Thursday, days two days the after the incident, right. So they had one um, at Tucker's Grove. Um, yesterday, la yesterday evening, and so it's kind of like a lineup of um, state, federal regulators, um, and uh, you know, Fish and Wildlife, EPA, U.S. Coast Guard's kind of leading the whole thing. Um, several others kind of sort of speaking, and um, I guess what was interesting yesterday is they had the CEO fly out from Houston, and so that was the first time that reporters were sort of able to attack him and say, you know. How do you feel about this? And <laughs> and you know it, his response is well, not good. That was a that was a TV reporter. <laughs> that was I'm a TV guessing. reporter. So then, <laughs> and then this morning it was actually, I thought even even worse than than yesterday. Um, you know there was I think I'm trying to think CNN, um, NBC, se several several TV reporters just lined up and um, bringing up the fact that. Um, all, all Plains American has... Um, all Plains a, American uh, being the name uh, of the pipeline being the, company. Being the name of the pipeline company has, um, you know, a, a record that media reports have immediately said, you know, 175 incident spills in the last, and since 2006. And, you know, wh what do you have to say about that? And the, the response has not been, we disagree with that. The response is, we don't have information to talk about that. Oh, so. great. The yeah. company does. That makes yeah. me feel much better. Mm -hmm. Linda, um, you've been working for the UK Guardian, which is a, a newspaper based in, in uh, England. Well, how is it explaining to people uh, what's, what's going on? Well, this is the, the New York Bureau. And yeah, I tried to uh, take the approach that they didn't know anything about the Gaviota Coast. And so I. I tried to explain and put it in context that this 
is like the last remaining rural stretch of coast in Southern California. And at least until this accident, it was considered to be the most ecologically healthy stretch of coastline in Southern California because it's relatively un undeveloped. You have the, the, the coast between um, Goleta and um, say Gaviota, which is ma mainly agricultural. And then you have the Vandenberg Air Force Base, which has not been developed. And that's all considered part of the Gaviota Coast, which in the early 2000s was the subject of a bitter fight uh, over a national park designation. And um, if you recall, Lois Capps, uh, Representative Lo Lois Capps, um, got the money to pay for a study of the coast and its significance, and it was determined to be worthy of national park designation. And then the whole idea was shelved under pressure from the landowners uh, yeah. by the Bush administration. Right. So it's, it's kind of a... And they understand this, the people in New York, or they don't? Um, well, yes. Um, I, and I think that, that the reason that is significant, that whole coastline, is because it's a transition zone. It's kind of a climate transition zone. So you have warm waters coming north, cold waters coming south, clashing right there, mixing right there, and so you have this enormous diversity that there's something like five places in the world like this. They're all on the western edge of continents. Yeah. They all have a Mediterranean climate. So well, if anybody was going to explain it to New York, I'm glad it was you because you're very clear about that. Now, Nick, I understand you've actually not left the office, so <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you to feel left out. Uh, I'm going to put it right here. <laughs> actually, you know what? I did leave the office. I take that back. When you where, were, where I was. You went to get lunch? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> where I was, I was actually at the Board of Supervisors where they were debating the most stringent air quality standards on greenhouse gas emissions, which really do target the oil industry. Um, and it, it was sort of the clash of the titans and uh, environmentalists on one side, oil industry on the other, and it was a uh, three-two vote, and the County of Santa Barbara imposed the most stringent uh, emission standards of any county in the country. All right, we'll get back to that, but I want to take But that's, that's where I was. Even that's you, where I was. <laughs> when you were in the office, you actually did some useful work, and, and you did a story, uh, which is online now, <coughs> didn't make the print edition, I guess, it's but too late. Um, <laughs> that this is literally the only pipeline in, in Santa Barbara County that did not have an automatic shutoff. Is that correct? This is the only pipeline in Santa Barbara County that does not have an automatic shutoff. And that is very significant because if it did, um, all the other pipelines, uh, they have it so that if there is a release of 20 barrels in 20 hours, I think that's correct. Um, it shuts down automatically. This was 2,500 barrels in a matter of a few hours. Uh, so had it triggered uh, the way the automatic shutoff, this one had a manual shutoff, I should say that. <coughs> so as soon as the company goes, oh my God, we have had a problem in Houston, then they have which to was, manually which was, shut Which off. was after Laura got there, right. apparently, yeah. that they figured it out. Yeah. So, so yeah, if they had the, the automatic, uh, we wouldn't have been in quite this dire circumstance. So g give us a sense of how, we keep talking about all these thousands of barrels of oil or 100,000 barrels of oil. So wh what's the latest numbers as of, as of so the, today? So the worst case would be a, a 105,000 gallons, 21,000 into the ocean. Barrels or gallons? Gallons. Okay. Now you covered... Uh, an earlier spill in 90, 1997? Yes. And much Off of the that. Gaviota how Coast. Does, how does that compare in terms of the amount of oil and what happened with that spill? So that was a case where it was the undersea pipeline on the ocean floor between an offshore oil platform and the processing plant in the Lompoc Valley. And the, the, a, a poor well, they eventually found that the cause was bad welding. So you have two sections of pipe that cracked and began to leak. 
automatically because there was an automatic shutoff. The, the flow of oil was shut off through the pipeline. But an operator on, on the, the platform overrode the shutoff and oil continued to leak out. And so it was small compared to this um, spill. It was about 7,000 gallons in all. And according to the um, estimates back then, it was something like 17 miles of coast that got hit with, you know, with the, or at least the, the slick was 17 miles long. It, um, the epicenter was kind of a surf beach. And a couple hundred birds were oiled. Um, the company had to pay the, the county a million dollars in a set settlement, court settlement. And it had to pay, uh, Bureau, Bureau, I think it was the Bureau of Land Management, another two million. But it was a lot less oil, but still about a pretty, third pretty of, substantial yeah. impacts. Huge, yeah. Impacts. So we can, do we, do we know, is it getting better, is it getting worse? Do we think that we have actual real numbers that we can count on, or is it, what, uh, what's your sense? It seems completely in flux. I, you've been at the press conferences more than I have, but. <laughs> Yeah, well, I know that the last I heard it spread out to nine square miles. So that's not necessarily a square or a rectangle, but, you know, the slick that has um, spread out and is going in different directions. You know, it's coming down to Santa Barbara area. Um, it's It was expected to reach the Goleta area by Thursday afternoon, which is today. Um, so it's it's hard to say. I mean, you have the, the winds and the currents going in all kinds of directions, so... Now, what's happening with the critters? Do you know? Um, I think that they they don't really have any numbers yet in terms of how many have been affected. You got that great picture wildlife. though. This is sort of oh, this thanks. iconic <laughs> picture of the guy trying to what was yeah, he trying to rescue? I think there? it was maybe like a cormorant, some kind of seabird, but it was just completely covered. That was just so sad. Though. Yeah, it was really now, sad. How soon after you got there was that? Um, that was about uh, an hour and a half after I, after I got there. What time did you get there? Um, I got there around two. Okay. So the spill, I think, was reported around like eleven thirty. And when did I think they it turn started? It off? I'm not sure when they. They said it that off, they they've issued this like statement that has this they timeline. Being they the, being the what the I planes. call the unified command. No. <laughs> 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 oh, I thought it was the unified. <laughs> no, the the, comp the oil company. Oh, the company. So the company issued this statement um, with this list of times that is, you know, what they're releasing at this point as mm -hmm. far as the timeline. So at, at 11.30, they said they shut off um, the pipe. Now, what exactly that means is still really unclear. Did they shut it off and then, you know, 11 miles of crude were still leaking out? I don't know. Um, so they said that happened at 11.30. They got a call from the firefighters that had notified them at 12.30 this was happening. By 1.30, they were able to send someone out. Uh, they have five people in Santa Barbara to um, say that they've you know, visually confirmed the release. No, that was... <laughs> this company's a bad actor, aren't they? Well, they don't have such a bad reputation in Santa Barbara, but if you look um, 2004 to 2007, in the states of uh, Kansas, Oklahoma, a few other states, the EPA said, you know what, you have to spend 41 million mm -hmm. bucks mm -hmm. to fix these pipelines that are dumping into uh, bodies of water nearby. That's a hefty sum. And uh, another 3.25 million just because we don't like your attitude. And um, in between 2006 and the present, there have been 175 incidents. And incidents, one of those words, what does that mean? Or it means is, you know, fifty thousand dollars worth of property damage. You know, somebody gets at, at least at, at least fifty thousand. Somebody goes to the hospital. Somebody gets killed. Um, five barrels get off the property, or if you know, five gallons get in the water. Um, so it's not an insignificant incident, and they've had one hundred and seventy-five. That's in the United States. Eleven of those are in California. We do not know if any of those eleven were involved with this pipe. Uh, I spoke with Kevin Drew, the president, the president, the uh, uh, head of the, Calif the uh, county energy um, division, and he said, up to now there have been no problems uh, here in Santa Barbara with this. I read somewhere, I can't remember where now, there was like a half gallon leak up there. Um, they have problems. Um, 
you know, I think. And their their <coughs> business is not drilling oil per se. They're they're in the transportation. They're in the business. transportation business, so they have pipes and they have trains. <coughs> I think it's important to remember, and somebody brought this up at the rally today at the courthouse, that this pipeline was the result of many years of fighting for overland transportation of offshore oil rather than tankering. Mm. And yeah, it was so a huge victory. And, and it was a huge victory. For the environment. Because yeah. Chevron at the time had um, uh, three offshore um, platforms plus a plant at Gaviota which has been dismantled since. I think because the the oil is about the consistency of peanut butter. But um, they wanted to tanker, and there were lawsuits over this. It went on for years and years and years. And finally, the county prevailed and, and forced them to uh, ship their oil by land. So this is as safe as it gets. This is as safe as yes. it gets. So when you talk nice. about you know, the pipeline of 97, that sort of emanates from way offshore, and so it can spread further. This one, even though the, the volumes are much greater, I think it may be easier to contain because it's coming into the water right by the shore. Yeah. <coughs> when we talked before the show, you, you were a little frustrated that the way the information's coming out. Do you feel like you're getting good information or no information or it seems Just as though lies. it's as little, not <laughs> it seems as though it's as little as possible. Who's in charge? So it, as far as the, the regulation side? Yeah. Um, or no, who's in charge of, of making this uh, all go uh, away? Of the, of the cleanup effort. Um, the United Command. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's, it's a, a mix of county, uh, state and federal um, agencies working together. I think they're all at the Calarial office. Um, you know, 200 people working on this, um, 350 people out um, on scene, up to 18 boats, um, thousands of feet of boom. I think what I was asking yesterday about, you know, uh, some environmentalists I think are worried about um, dispersants. Um, and chemicals used to clean it up, and uh, I've been told that they're not not using that at this point, and just trying to suck up the the oil with with vacuum. So they're trying to surround it, surround it, and contain it, and suck it up, and then you take it in on trucks, and then apparently, you know, measure it. But it's a mix of oily water. Well, you were talking about how awful the smell was when you when you first got out there. How I mean, were you how long were you able to stay out there? I lasted about uh, two or three hours, and then I just, I I had some shots I knew would work with our first story, and I thought, oh, it'd be great to walk around some more, get some more detail shots, like some, some cl try to find some more animal life that's been affected, and um, I finally just had to turn back, and it was, it was incredibly strong. And I actually went back the next morning, um, around nine or ten and they had already brought in the cleanup crews in their you know spacesuits their white spacesuits and um, it looked like they had made uh, some progress cleaning up the oil but the smell was still still the same. pervasive yeah it was still really, so did, really bad. did did McFadden and Bolton say they would spring for a hazmat suit for <laughs> <laughs> there you go <laughs> well, I know probably respirator they probably <laughs> they probably didn't um, <laughs> tell us about the there was a there was a rally today yeah. Today, two days after, what what do you what do we think the community response is going to be to this? Well, everybody chanted, "No more, no more, no more," and well, they. I say that every morning. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, they they meant oil. Right? Yes, and um, there were about a hundred people, and they all had very interesting signs. Like there was one that said, "Again, period, seriously," which I thought was very California. Mm -hmm. And um, fossil fuels, dumb and dumber. Um, so who were these people? Are did they represent? Solar a doesn't spill. Something cr like cross that. Cross, cross uh, 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 a lot of different environmental groups. Or sure, get oil out was there. Which started what after the 1969? After mm -hmm. the and it's such a after the blowout in the channel. The 69 uh, spill. 46 years, said another sign. Started the environmental Same movement, message. started all of the moratoriums and so on and so forth. Uh, clean Water Act, Clean Air Act, 
a lot of things came out of that spill. Yeah. So do you think, is there anything that will happen politically, locally as a result of this? I think this is not a good day to be uh, an oil company uh, in Santa Barbara County. I mean, <coughs> you know, they always are on the defensive anyway, 3-2 um, supervisorial majority. Um, I think uh, this coupled with concern about fracking, coupled with concern about our groundwater uh, supplies in, in the face of a drought, coupled with you know, climate weirdness that just seems to keep escalating and escalating. I think this sort of is a cherry on top. And I think that the political momentum is, this is, this is a parade everybody's gonna wanna be walking in front of. Right now we're in an intensely political season in Santa Barbara and will be for the next 12 months. And anybody who wants to get support in the South Coast will find that they probably can't go too far advocating for uh, an environmental restrictive uh, platform. So uh, in terms of the details, I'm not quite sure, you know, what are the issues where push comes to shove, but... Um, well, it's interesting because we had Measure P, when was that? Last fall? That yeah, it was last fall. See, pretty good. Um, and it, it was defeated. I mean, 63, it called... 63 percent lost. To, right. to, to fracking. I mean, it, uh, and we've talked on the show about how that was partly due to the vagaries of an off-year election and so on and so forth. But still, also, in Santa Barbara County, that was kind of surprising. Well, there was a $7 million, more than $7 million spent by the oil companies versus 400000 locally. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't, I mean, I thought that it would be, it wasn't, it was something like 67 to 47 percent. No, that doesn't add up. But well, it was it was a substantial win. I mean, yeah. it was it was overwhelming. So I, I'm, I guess what I'm saying is, what what is there that can be done politically that is hasn't well, I think it already depends. been done. I mean, I think it depends what hap what this investigation reveals. Mm -hmm. You know, if if they find that there was something on the regulatory end that was like something that should have been dealt with in a way then you know there can easily be a legislative fix for that I mean mm -hmm. well, yeah. we have all these oil companies up we have these uh, onshore projects take up in, in uh, northern county uh, where they are actually quite popular they provide really good paying jobs uh, there's a, there's a, some strong support for it up up there but um, I think they will go into the buzzsaw politically, uh, I think people... You mean that there's, there's projects that are pending? There are projects that are pending, large, significant projects. And I think, you know, they're going to have a much harder time uh, getting through the county process at this point. And, I mean, because here we have, you know, as you said, this was like the All-American all Pipeline was the environmental answer. Now, nobody thought, oh, this is the end of oil spills. But, you know, that this got out of hand so much, so fast, before they pulled the trigger, I think people are going, our, our fail-safe uh, response isn't good enough. We aren't on top of stuff fast enough. We aren't being able to prevent it as well as we should. And but, so, but but the, the federal government is in charge of the Gaviota proposal, and the Gaviota Coast proposal that Exxon and Sunset are proposing to drill offshore from on the that's base. The slant drilling so that doesn't, that's out of the county's hands, practically. And then uh, in Goleta, the State Land Lands Commission approved expansion of, of offshore drilling connected to an onshore wharf that is very old and sort of rusting on the beach at Elwood. And the city is suing the state for approving that project. So in some ways, the locals don't have a lot of control. In well, in, in this one, the locals don't have control over this one. I mean, going back, you know, 1988, 89, this is approved. Everybody's happy. But the county says, you know what? We'd like to be able to look at the x-rays of your welds just to make sure everything's cool. And all Americans says, no way in hell. We are a multi-state operation. Uh, we're not going to let you, an agency of one state, look over our shoulders. We or will one county. Mm -hmm. One county. Mm -hmm. We will allow only the federal government to look in, into our cookie jar, and um, that was a huge 
bitter conflict. The county lost, they backed off. So right now, Kevin Drew, the county energy, they have absolutely no say over you know, uh, inspecting uh, this pipeline. They have say over the, the soil on top, the vegetation on top, but in terms of the safety of the pipeline, that's a federal agency. Now, if it gets worse, the feds farmed that out to some county fire state. marshal, the, I'm sorry, state fire marshal, and then two years ago, the state fire marshal says, we don't have enough people to do the job anymore, we're gonna give it back to the feds. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and this is a federal agency nobody's ever heard of. <laughs> Pri Prism, Prisma. <laughs> PIMSA. 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 I was gonna, that was my next <laughs> and, and, and PIMSA, nobody's ever heard of it, it's a yeah. tiny little agency. Now, 175 incidents. Okay, let's go back. Well, that's a lot. How many, how much money, how many fines have, have uh, been levied by PIMSA? 12 cents. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty close. Um, 234,000, I think, is that the right number? 185,000 different yeah, And this company made, what, $2.2 .2 billion last yeah. year, something like yeah. that? Yeah. And just to jump in, the federal agency, I think I read um, PIMSA, that's the acronym. Um, they, they, we need, we need shirts. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. They um, have, I think it was 2.6 million miles of pipeline that they oversee. Mm. So it's like, how can they even, they can't x-ray all that pipeline. A lot of this, it seems like the onus is on the company to make sure their pipes aren't corroded. So it's kind of like, who's watching out for who? Nobody's watching yeah. out for, for, Anybody. for the public interest. That's for sure. Uh, just real quick before we have to go uh everybody wants to help you know in a time like this do they does anybody really need help do they need people to come and pull birds out like that poor <laughs> fellow <laughs> 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 or anything like oh that gosh, or poor guy. what are you hearing out there well it sounds like people were you know right away eager to jump in and get right down there on the beach and i think the sheriffs and some other enforcement agencies said you know you're not getting on the beach you're not you know i imagine that's a huge liability and um, they also, you know, direct people to the appropriate channels <laughs> to, yeah. um, so there's, you can go online and, and sign up. So they're still asking for volunteers. All right. All right. We will put a list of resources on our uh, Facebook page, SB City Desk, uh, to tell you what you can do if you want to do something. And meanwhile, thanks to all my guests, Lara Cooper, Kelsey Bruger, Melinda, Melinda Burns. Burns. It's good to have you on. I thank haven't you. seen you in a long time. And Nick Welsh. And thank you all for watching. Uh, we will see you next time on uh, City Desk. And check us out on Facebook. Check us out on Twitter. And if you got something to say, let us know at sbcitydesk at gmail.com. Thanks, and thanks for watching.